I've seen my YouTube analytics right after United States, which is by far the biggest group, like three times larger than the next one. The second biggest group is Germany. And whether you like it or not, the EU as a whole is a very big and very powerful political force. And the Linux desktop has moved on quite far from its early roots. And there's not many of them, but there are companies that do sell Linux-powered devices. For those companies, if they want to sell things in the EU, the software it runs needs to follow EU regulations. And we're at a point where that is something that can affect Linux desktops. Now, even if they're not making a big deal about it, the leadership of the major Linux desktops are very keenly aware about these problems and work has gone into place to address them. Now, the regulation in question today is this one right here. I hate this website. It's oh god. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Commission Regulation EU 2023 826 of 17 April 2023, laying down eco design requirements for off mode, standby mode, and network standby energy consumption of electrical and electronic household and office equipment pursuant to Directive 2009 125 EC of the European Parliament and of the Council and Repealing Commission Regulations EC number 1275 2008 and EC number 107 2009. Now, I'm not going to read the entire thing because, you know, um, it's long. Also, a lot of it just frankly isn't relevant to what we're talking about today. It's about power usage on all manner of devices, but it also does apply to computers. But when there is a relevant part, I will be sure to show it. Now, both KDE and GNOME are putting changes into place or have already put changes into place to comply with this regulation as this is going to be going into effect as of May. In fact, in the GNOME case, they have dealt with prior regulations like this as well. For example, this merge request made back in 2023. Power. Default to sleep after 15 minutes rather than 20 minutes. Beginning with GNOME 3.28, we began defaulting to sleep after 20 minutes in order to comply with some European regulations. Not the current regulation, but an older one. Commission Regulation EU number 801 2013, amending Regulation EC number 1275 2008 with regard to eco design requirements for standby off-mode electric power consumption of electrical and electronic household and office equipment and amending regulation EC number 642-2009 with regard to eco design requirements for televisions. These are all so overly wordy in how they're named. Anyway, there is a flaw in our plan. Even if we tune the setting to 20 minutes, this doesn't actually work in practice for manufacturers affected by these regulations because the system might only begin to suspend after 20 minutes have passed, but they're actually required to finish suspending before this time. Additionally, the timeout won't begin until the system has fully booted into GNOME, which adds additional uncertainty. Solution, sleep after 15 minutes, so you actually have a barrier there. So if it takes a little bit longer, it's still going to be done by the 20 minute window. And this is something that was already being done over on Ubuntu, but this was first reported on Fedora. And because Fedora was following what Upstream was doing, Fedora didn't actually have the solution here. So it looked like Fedora was the one misbehaving. And yeah, it's weird to have to make this change, but look, you're not gonna change the EU regulation to some random Linux desktop. So you might as well do so. This uh, M Pearson here is a guy from Lenovo and Lenovo wants to sell devices that actually have Linux on them. So it, it just makes more sense to just comply with the regulation. Basically my point is there is precedent for making change based on EU regulations. So back to the regulation I mentioned at the start. Here we have the KDE issue and here we have GNOMES. I'm going to start with KDE because 
their solution is a bit more straightforward. Starting in May of this year, a new EU directive is coming to force about power management that requires computers off the ability to disable power management functions to warn users of the consequence of increased energy consumption when doing so. Here is the excerpt from the regulation. The equipment may offer the user the option to deactivate the power management function. In such cases, the user shall be warned about the increased energy consumption of that action. That warning shall be included in the instruction manuals and where applicable, be made available on the displays integrated or connected to the equipment, excluding information or status displays. That option shall not be part of the installation procedure of the equipment and shall require a separate user action on the equipment. Basically, if you have the option to disable power management features, there needs to be a warning about it. And if there is an option, disable power management features cannot be the default. It has to be something the user chooses themselves. We do not yet have this in our UI and we need this to be implemented fairly soon because not having it will prevent KDE Plasma from shipping on devices in Europe once this goes into effect. This led to two merge requests in the Power Devil component of KDE. Show warning when disabling auto suspend or setting it too long and warn about higher energy consumption when blocking sleep. Now, the only minor gripe with this merge request is the specific wording used in the warning. Initially, people felt it was a little bit too naggy. Disabling automatic suspend will result in higher energy consumption. It is recommended that you keep this setting enabled. This eventually changed into disabling automatic suspend will result in higher energy consumption, removing the recommendation. Personally, I don't really think it's that big of a deal, right? Yeah, it's a bit more text, and you can make the argument that if it's more text, people are less likely to read it. I think that's fair. But frankly, it's not that big of a deal either way. And the second merge request, this went into changing the thing that GNOME did a few years back, so making it so the system goes to sleep by 20 minutes, not 20 minutes. And if they do so, then show them a warning saying, hey, this is going to do things. This will result in higher energy consumption. You have now been warned. Now let's go over to GNOME. This was again opened by M. Pearson, or better yet, Mark Pearson, once again, from Lenovo. Now Lenovo's main thing isn't selling Linux devices, but they do have some for sale. So for those they do sell, they kind of need to meet EU regulations if they want to sell in the EU. So basically, he was sent on a quest to resolve this problem. Now, as these documents are very, very, very complicated, initially it was thought that maybe this didn't actually apply to notebooks. Turns out that's not actually the case. He went back to the legal team and they're like, yeah, um, this is something we actually need to worry about, but th th here's a big wall of text explaining why it's something you need to worry about. If you want to read it, it's, 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 it's here on the screen. Feel free to read it. TLDR, it's something you need to care about. And they're like, yep, yeah, sure. Okay, fair enough. Uh, the document I read didn't specify the format of the warning. If we need to add something... I was wondering if a simple label in the suspend options dialog would suffice. Disabling automatic suspend is likely to result in increased power consumption or automatic suspend is a power saving feature. Turning it off may result in more power being used. So from there, the majority of the comments turned into how do we best show this warning? Do we show it below? Do we show it... Oh, that's a different thing. Do we show it above do we show it in some other format how do we show the warning what is the best way to display the warning literally no one disagrees about showing the warning and there being a warning being necessary but now you have the designers arguing where do we put it what do we do with it at the end of the day it doesn't actually matter literally not even slightly 
but of course people are going to argue about it. Now a much more valuable discussion is whether or not this can be introduced in the next GNOME version, because right now we have already passed the feature freeze, but this isn't a feature introduction, it's more like a string change. So there can be exceptions to the release model for minor things like this, and especially in something this big, which could stop devices being sold in the EU. There's some debate about whether or not it should be introduced immediately, or the next point release after that. As it currently stands, this is the solution introduced, an info box under all of those settings. Disabling automatic suspend will result in higher power consumption. It is recommended to keep automatic suspend enabled. This is the reason why KDE used this very similar wording. They actually base their issue off of what GNOME was doing. Right now, there's still that open discussion about do we break the release model for this change? Nothing has been fully decided upon yet. It's still being discussed. So, very likely this will be introduced in the next version. I don't really see why it wouldn't be. Like over on the KDE side, Michael Kadanzaro in the GNOME side does have some issue over the wording though. I understand that we have to say disabling automatic suspend will result in higher power consumption. Do we have to say it is recommended to keep automatic suspend enabled though? I think it's enabled by default due to regulations, not because it's actually a good default. It really only makes sense when on battery power, when plugged in, it's an anti-feature. With modern Lenovo laptops, suspend happens so quickly and silently that the user probably doesn't even notice. I was extremely confused why my long running tasks were taking so long because I didn't realize my laptop was suspending. Personally, I'm not much of a laptop user and when I want to do long running tasks, usually it's not on a laptop, it'll be on my desktop and on my desktop, I don't use suspend, I don't use sleep or anything like that. So it never really becomes a problem. I never really thought about it like that. Alan Day responds with, I don't understand why is it an anti-feature? Michael again, auto suspend, unexpectedly pauses running tasks in the best case, or possibly breaks them if the task requires a network connection like SSH. Auto suspend is really only a good default when you're running on battery power, since there the consequence of failure to suspend is you run out of battery, which is bad. Of course, we need to set this default anyway so that distributors like Lenovo can sell laptops with GNOME, I just don't see why the language we use needs to recommend it. Arguably, terminals should take suspend inhibitors to turn off the auto suspend when a command is executing, but they don't. So, there should be a solution in place so the system doesn't suspend when you're doing something where it shouldn't suspend, but it does, so it does. Now the Linux desktop is by no means the biggest thing out there, and a lot of things can kind of skate by with nobody really thinking about them and regulations technically affecting them, but no one actually cares. But I think it's fair to say when we're talking about things like KDE and GNOME, it's at the point now where it's big enough that you may need to think about EU regulations, US regulations, or anything else out there where a company might be trying to sell a device using that software. You might want to rant about how much you hate the EU, how much you hate their regulations. If you want to do that, go to my comments, not to these issues. Those people don't want to deal with it, but I like it for the algorithm. So let me know your thoughts down below. Do you live in the EU? Do you care for EU regulations? Maybe? Maybe not. If you're outside the EU, what do you think of a change like this being made to accommodate that region? I'd love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. If you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, Sleep Bear Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and your rope, my rope.